Rapa Nui, this is a game about Easter Island and the making of the statues of Easter Island. It is a game for two to four players. Uh, you can play it with very young gamers. Here it says 10 plus. You can probably play it with younger folks. I play with my daughter Luisa, who is eight, with my daughter Amelia, who is 10, and no problem whatsoever in understanding and implementing the rules and the strategies. So definitely a game that can work in these difficult times of pandemic in which maybe you, like me, don't have game night with your adult friends. It is not a game that plays solitaire, and um, there is that little detail there. These days we like to have that option, but we don't have it here. It is also a game with a lot of similarities uh, with the game Giants that uh, came out about 10 years ago I believe with a very similar map similar overall rules and ideas also worker placement like this one but in truth we do enough differences that uh, it, that basically these are two different games and so if you have that one you may still want to consider this one it wouldn't be redundant so we have uh, the map representing the island with a lot of good, very effective player aids around here, reminding your turn structure up there, areas where you store tokens and things like that. At the beginning of the game, we take these tiles, we shuffle them and we place them randomly on these areas here. There are more than you use in a single game. These are the ones that I'm not using right now. So you know that there will be variety because it will be a different combination of those tiles each time. Right there, there are scoring tiles. They're placed in, uh, in descending order with the highest value on top and the lowest values at the bottom. So it's a little bit of a race because going there and getting the tile top tile from a pile first will give give you more points than a pile than a tile from the pile later each player also has a player race, such as this one uh, that used to keep track of resources we have reeds eggs wood and pearl and they are in order of value from highest to from lowest to highest value you have four tablets that will give you advantages if during the game you spend resources to activate them. Say if I spend two eggs, I have two eggs, I do, I spend them. Then I can take this one and place it in this area here and I make it active and I have that advantage now for the rest of the game. You start with four tablets but you can only use three of them. You can only activate two of them for actual advantages during the game. And then you have your workers. You have your standard workers that can be sculptures or can be transporters depending on where you place them. You have a chief that will help with sculpting and then you have a shaman that is used to determine turn order. So the first phase of the game, this is a worker placement game, simply players will place their available workers on the board. You place one, the next player place one, and next player places one, and so on and so forth until they're all being placed. So the shaman can only go there, so that means if you place the shaman there early on, you will get to then uh, place your token in an advantageous position when it comes to turn order. But that's all the shaman does, so it's a matter of opportunity cost. As you did that, maybe someone else placed one of their workers in a location that otherwise you would like. If you place your workers in a location on the island, for now that's all they do, nothing else, but they will later be used as transporters. If you place them in these spaces here, they will work, they will activate as workers later. You don't start with all of your workers available at the beginning of the game. For example, you don't start with the chief, you have to get it using one of your uh, upgrades, but when you do have it, if you do have it, then the chief is placed in one of these locations and will count as a sculpture. For that level, you can see there are three levels of sculpture, small, medium, and large. These spaces, they can only have one sculpture each, and so for example, I could put a sculpture there, and maybe a sculpture there, but I could not put one in the same spot. There's a limited amount of of spots. Also the side that I'm showing you is the one for two players, the other side of the board is for three or four players. So we start by putting down all of our workers, after that uh, we look at the 
uh, the turn track and depending on where the shamans were placed we may have to reconcile in case this tile was here now yellow player goes first because their shaman is there and then uh, it's time to uh, sculpt to sculpt uh, our our moais our statues how many and which ones you get depends on uh, on, on where your sculptures or uh, sculptors are. The sculptor makes a sculptor. I don't know, that's how you say it. So, this dude here in the next to a small statue, this dude can make a small statue. However, if you have one in the small and one in the medium, then you can make a medium. If you had uh, one in each level, then you can make a large statue, but you still have to have the full set. This one, there's no, uh, there's no small, there's no work in the small level, then these two don't do anything. So, this would allow me to build a large. Each of these dudes can be used to make only one statue. However, there's an interesting thing, the chief counts as an extra as an extra person who is sculpting statues, so because of the situation here, I could make a large one, and this one alone can make a small one. I could count this one as making the large, and then that one makes the small, nothing changes there. So this is how we work, so you should be able to get one or two uh, statues every turn, hopefully. The statues, small, large, or medium, but who knows? In the original game, Giants, again, they're different games, but the simulators in the game pieces, you could tell the statues easily. You can still tell the size of the statues easily. They were even in different colors and the sizes were very different. I just look at these statues and I don't know if they're both medium, both small, until I actually put them next to each other. And look, look how, how little the difference is. So when you play the game, when you play the game, you want to line them up in three lines, uh, but it's just a little bit annoying that you can't tell at a glance which one is which. On the plus side, once you get a statue, the size of the statue is really irrelevant. So first I complain about that, and then I say, but then it's really 100% irrelevant. Um, because once you have it, then it goes, the way it travels, the way it's put on the board, uh, doesn't do anything. All function the same once you have them. What changes is that uh, if you build a small statue, you will get one resource of your choice on your resource board. Remember this one? If you get a medium statue, three resources, and if you get a large statue, five, and you mark those on your on your resource board, and you get the statue. So everybody gets the statues, everybody gets the resources. Then it is time to actually put them up. In the next phase of the turn, we transport them. They start from here, ideally, although they're in your play area. You need to transport them from there to wherever the heck it is that you want to place them. And you can place them only in areas that still have that tile. You will place, you will erect the statue there, and you will take the tile, which will give you a different advantage based on the symbol indicated there. And you can spend the tile immediately or preserve it. So the statue has to travel from the quarry all the way to the position where you want to place it. It has to travel in areas occupied by workers. If they're in areas occupied by your own workers, nothing happens. You don't have to pay your own workers, I guess. If the statue travels in an area occupied by someone else's worker, then, then the worker collects the resources indicated there. So for example, here a red player collects a read if I use it. It's interesting that it's the island that pays them, not the active player. Also once uh, a worker erects a statue, they go and take a nap. You put them down like this, they count as exhausted. And that's pretty much the general idea when it comes to erecting, erecting statues. In this phase where we are building our monuments, we can also put uh, little hats on top of the statue. The hats start from the clay area and they travel, well from there, they travel to those statues in the same way. So actually, and you need to have a non-exhausted worker there. Suppose I have an ability that lets me wake this guy up. Now then, when we put the hats on, I can say, okay, I move a hat from here to here, rep player gains a wood, and we put it there, and we put a little hat there, 
And again, go and take a nap, you worth a lot today. When you put those hats on, you got a chance of trading your resources for those point tiles that I showed you earlier that are up there. So, and you need to trade four of them. So I put a hat there, I could trade four reeds or whatever it is that I have at least four of for a point. So suppose I build that hat there. So one, two, three, four. I spend those four resources and I take the tile on top of the wooden pile. When you trade, so this is a reminder that you need four of them. And this is a reminder that you need to build a hat to take one of those tiles to get that trading option. I take it from the main pile. These are the smaller piles here called the outstanding tiles. You can only use special game effects to get them. And so, hooray, that was all the work, but it totally paid off because I got some ability tile there by erecting that statue. Uh, I, I got my little thing here and maybe as other people were building, maybe then Red Player now builds a hat there, build, has built a statue there will build a hat there, so now it is my workers here that collect resources because their valuable services have been uh, have been used. So that's the, that's the general idea pretty much. You continue to play until uh, most spaces on the board have been have been built, meaning you have built statues in most of them. And at the point you have final scoring, you collect victory points based on the tiles that you collected here. There is a tablet that you receive at the end, at the beginning of the game. You can trade it to gain the advantages of one of the special tiles. But if you save it, it's worth three victory points at the end of the game. Some of these other tiles may give you victory points. This one is three. You count points of every possible source, and at the end of the game, the player with the highest score wins the game. I like Rapanui enough. I find it to be a good game. Uh, I'm, I'm not giving it a stellar endorsement, mainly because of the comparison with Giants, uh, which I played in the past and I like very much, and I like Rapanui for the same reasons why I like Giants. Uh, the two games have many similarities. Rapa Nui is like a reimagining. Many similarities, but also many differences, uh, mainly about the production and also about some of the rules here and there. Uh, one thing that I wasn't too crazy about in Giants was the fact that you had a limited resource wood at the beginning of the game, and so that is was something very useful, and if you picked it up early in the game, there was less left for other people. Experienced players would tend to hoard that at the beginning of the game, and and then less experienced players will start doing the same the next time that they play. Um, and that made the first phase of the game a little different from the rest. Uh, uh, here you don't have anything of that kind. Uh, everything is available to everybody uh, for the entire game. I mean, or, I should say, uh, when you have those tokens about points, those uh, special benefit styles, again, those are limited, but there is a large supply for everybody to try to get them. Uh, so there you have something that uh, uh, the Rapa Nui, I think, improves upon when compared to the original game, um, because now it's more of a homogeneous experience. At the same time, you have so many other things, so it almost feels like you shuffle things around, but the general impression is not that different from the one that I had from Giants. If I now play Giants, I say, well, this is a really interesting, very original worker placement game because you place your workers, then you use them for different things. There's a little bit of coalition building because you can say, hey, hey, uh, would you mind putting somebody there because I'm going to need them and you also get some read out of it. Okay, yeah, why don't I actually, why don't I put it here and I get some eggs out of it, which is a little bit better and you can still use that. So, uh, I like Giants and I like Rapa Nui for the same reasons and although I, I see all the differences, it almost feels like an equation where you move the numbers around but when you total them, it's almost the same. So it's, it, the total is almost the same. And that's, I would say, a limitation to me because I expect that if you get a new game and, and you spend your money to buy a new game and maybe you're already at Giants, uh, to have something significantly different. And But overall, the experience feels very, very similar. Uh, 
maybe production values, okay, well, the production values have improved. I don't think so. I think uh, Giant still look, look looks a lot better in terms of production values. Uh, you had those beautiful screens that have different colors, but also they're thematic. So you have the, the red player that has clay, other players, their screen and their components look... Uh, uh, they're connected thematically to the color, uh, the plastic miniatures are different, the statues look different in Giants and they don't here. So actually the map looks as pretty as the original one, but other things when it comes to the actual workers, where you have different miniatures with different molds, um, when it comes to the statues, generally speaking I much prefer Giants. So I, again, I like Rapa Nui. But because I like Giants, I'm not entirely convinced, I'm not entirely enthusiastic about the project of getting out, of giving us a game which is almost the same from the points of view of gameplay. Uh, production values to me are a little less than they, than, than they used to be, a little less exciting. Maybe also, I don't remember how much I paid for Giants, so maybe the, the trade-off is that the price for... Um, Rapa Nui is, is, is lower. Maybe there is that. Um, and so that's that's my assessment. It's, it's a good game. It's a good game. It just feels like too much of a repeat with slightly less exciting components for me to say, whoa, how amazing it is. It feels like a second edition of Giants with another title. Again, so it doesn't look like I'm too negative. I like Giants and I like Rapa Nui. I like uh, how the different parts of the turns work together. The worker placement, again, with those decisions uh, that require planning and even require interaction and coalition with the building of the statues, uh, with uh, the fact that you can use a single worker for multiple <laughs> for multiple transport jobs as they bring a statue and then they bring a hat. Um, and then how you collect those tiles and you strategize based on that. The further the, the further the transportation, the more valuable the resources, but then you also maybe get a tile that you want and then you time some of those tiles and it creates some mighty synergies it's all fun. But when all of these components from Giants have been reshuffled, the overall experience remains very similar to me with less interesting components and less interesting production values. So this is my assessment of Rapa Nui. If you haven't played Giants, what you have here and you have no interest in tracking down a copy or maybe now it has become too expensive, it's a very very reliable, very solid worker placement game with an interesting theme, uh, still looks pretty, um, and interesting interactions, interesting decisions, so interesting everything is very solid, very entertaining gameplay. If you have Giants, however, I just don't see much of a reason for you to, to, acquire, to acquire Rapa Nui. And that, I guess, is my assessment for Rapa Nui.